Hi, Sarah Huggins here. I have had technical difficulties. I've made a lot of things. I've filmed a lot of things and then I found out that I couldn't just slap the things I had filmed together. So henceforth movies will be in, well, things I do will be in one of two forms. Either short, one take, you get to see me talking during it, things, or voiceover added afterwards and you just see the process and not my face. Guess which one this one's supposed to be? <laughs> um, not quite sure I have the nerve for this, but I have this fabric that I dyed in August of... Sheesh, I think it was two years ago at this point. I adapted the diagram from Sengoku Daimyo for the fabric I was working with. Although, I'm not going to be doing nine inches here. It's going to be six inches. The collar will just be narrower. Let's see. Ugh, Dang it. I measured eight. Just built two. One. Although it does cross. It crosses. There's no you know, we'll try nine. We'll try nine. We'll try having that be. No. <sighs> okay. So I'm working with the fabric I had rather than the fabric they described. So this was torn out of a large section of permanent press muslin, which in the process of preparing for dyeing by washing in hot water with professional, professional textile detergent, I completely ruined the anti-wrinkle finish on. Uh, <laughs> so this is after having ironed it once and I have started folding down the edge once. I'm going to fold it down again so I can just do running stitch all the way around and I will link a very nice quilters video on how to iron properly using templates which I'm not mucking with because it doesn't need to be that precise for my purposes. Also, the same person has a very straightforward explanation of how to put a masking tape guide on your sewing machine so you can get consistent seam width, which looks like a really good idea. So I'm working with a two by three foot section of table and just moving things around as I go. And when we get to cutting the collar, I will talk about different ways of cutting things larger than the space you are working with, since the color section is 9 by 28.5. I it could fit in the space I'm working with. <sighs> Although I guess I have nothing better to talk about now. So, you can, for certain kinds of fabric, one, one, it has to be woven, and two, it has to be um, both composed of threads that you can easily tear through, 
and firmly woven enough that the whole thing doesn't come apart if you rip. So for... and it leaves a bit of a fuzzy, raveled edge. It damages the fabric. You, you lose a little bit. It really depends on the fabric. So if it's the sort of fabric where you end up with an inch or two of frayed things hanging off, it's probably not worth ripping. It's probably worth going to the trouble of figuring out scissors and stuff. But this muslin rips beautifully. So I had a lot of fun ripping out rectangles for pre-dyeing stuff. I just didn't label the rectangles by what I meant to do with them. I suspect this was supposed to be sleeves maybe at one point, which is why I put the notch in the middle to rip again, because apparently this vest type thing you don't even need to you don't do a directly in the middle rip. However, that notch does mean that I don't get to fuss about which end I want to make the front and cut the collar pieces out of since I'm going to use this side because the edge is not coming up far enough to cover that notch. I'm shooting for another quarter inch on top of the quarter inch already folded up. I'm trying to keep my fingers away from the iron as it is on the cotton setting with steam. And you can get some really painful burns that way. And possibly I have steam turned off. Not the worst thing that's happened. I did recently refill it. Alright. So if I was finishing the edge with a handkerchief hem, which is a nifty way to finish thinner fabric, I probably would have only ironed over the first quarter, but I'm planning to just do a running stitch. The pattern given at Sengoku Daimyo takes advantage of the width of general, generally available fabric and lays out the pattern pieces so that the unseamed exposed portions over the, you can't see me, yeah, and the, the portions that go over the edge of the shoulder rather than needing to finish those edges, those just run along selvages, which is great as long as you have fabric that doesn't shrink differently than its selvages. Pre-washing your fabric in the way you intend to wash the finished garment should give you an idea of whether the selvages will behave nicely and you can just use them as finished edges or whether you will want to cut them off and finish the edges yourself. So with using the selvages as the finished edge for the outer edge of the garment, then the raw edges are tucked inside the collar, which of course has its own raw edges tucked under as it is applied, and the raw edge for the back seam can be folded into a, uh, a French seam. All right, in this case, I'm going to be finishing the edges, cutting out the collar, and then putting a fake seam into the back of it. And by fake seam, I mean it's a seam that doesn't 
really jo it joins the fabric to itself rather than cutting into two widths which originally this construction this would have been two widths and then doing a French seam on the to encase the raw edges leave it with no raw edges and just seam the inside looks right from the outside no extra fabric used up by doing the seam, although I'm probably gonna, well, I don't know. Don't know if I'll do that one on my machine or not. <sighs> Let's see. Okay, we've gotten to corner. Holding this down again results in odd bunched up bit there, even though there's no raw edge exposed. I'm just going to unfold this and fold this down one more time before tucking this in again so that those two meet at a nice mitered corner. This is probably completely unnecessary, but it makes me happy. And means slightly fewer layers of fabric to sew through at the corner. Although, now that I look at it, I have butchered the mitered corner. It is not meeting in a nice little, it's got a small triangle taken out of the top of it. <sighs> Corners are rough, folks. As are straight lines and 90 degree angles. And in I think it's close enough. Plus, it's going to be tucked into Hakama. So, yeah, maybe I should have just zigzagged this edge and not plan to fold the bottom edge over at all. But you never know what's going to stick out the, the weird side thingies. All right, this corner. Again, but not too far. Okay. So, if you look at the imaginary point where things cross, that is where you want to fold things over to on the second try so that everything matches up and you end up with a nice crisp point. And depending on how badly you've eyeballed on the... Wait, no. Dang it. I was looking at the wrong point. <sighs> okay. This. Okay, let's fold over once. Leave the point out. Leave the point out of this. Fold that side twice. You can find really good tutorials on how to do mitered corners. This is just the slapdash version. And fold the other side over. Unfold the other side over twice. Okay, now you see a set of two creases, three if you've been a little wobbly in your ironing, intersecting at four points. You want to fold the corner down to here, so at the lowest point fold it again so the crease crosses the lowest point. Iron that. And then re-iron 
vertical and horizontal creases. Depending on what fabric you're using and what temperature you're ironing at, you may need to be more or less careful not to... See if it's not square. Dang it. It's better than the other one. More or less careful to avoid scorching that fabric. But generally, if there's a point with a bunch of layers all coming together and you're not, you can leave it there for a few seconds, especially while you're figuring out the next bit. If you smell something burning, you've left it too long. Or you have other problems. But yeah. I guess I just the whole process can be very forgiving and there are ways to make things easier for yourself like using templates and there are ways to make things harder for yourself like just sort of eyeballing it because you're you are the kind of lazy that makes more work for yourself and you can live with things being a little But, I mean, the whole point of Shibori is that it, it comes out imperfect and sort of hazy and approximate. So, some of that in the garment construction is appropriate. Alright, flip this last bit under. Also, I have no idea how cutting the collar out of this is going to exactly work. Basically, you end up with three collar pieces of equal width. I don't yet know <laughs> exactly I'm going to manage that but all right this is the cotton thread I'm using it's Coates and Clark Yale blue 30 weight It's on the darker side relative to the fabric I'm sewing, and it shows up like crazy in the white spots, but it looks pretty. So, I have some doll making needles stuck in with the Sashiko needles. Um, not sure exactly what it is about <sighs> Sashiko needles. They just feel sturdier. They feel sturdier. They... I don't feel like they're warping in my hands. Also, unlike the super tiny quilters betweens that I recently sewed with, they... <laughs> somehow I have less dropping thereof. Okay. You are... How do I get you out of this plastic trap that you are in? There we go. It's free. Alright, so... There's different opinions on how long a length of thread you want to work with. Some people hate threading needles. 
and will put up with a lot of thread tangling to avoid it. Some people hate dealing with thread tangling and will put up with a lot of needle threading to deal with it. But, so the rule of thumb I heard was if it's about as long as you pull your arm, that's generally an okay length. So, hand at full extension, thread back at my shoulder, opposite shoulder. And that gives about three feet. This is at odds with the 18 inches guideline, which I don't know who came up with the 18 inches guideline, but it involves way more needle threading than I am willing to put up with. Wrap the thread around the needle, you have a little loop that stands out, and yeah, watch it not work for the camera. Oh, hey, lamp shaded it, now it works. All right, so you want the thread pulled through a fair amount, but the two tails should be uneven, or you're going to have to be constantly adjusting the shorter tail. So I guess 30 inches gives about 18. I'm just gonna... Where do I want to start this? Ha <laughs> ha! Here. All right. And I'm going to do running stitch. Longer needles are easier for running stitch. Shorter needles are easier for whip stitch and similar things. So we're just going to secure the thread by going forward. A few stitches. Ah. Shoot. This is the section that's going to be cut off to make the collar. All right. Really should measure what that's going to be before I secure the thread because I do not want to cut off the section in which I secure my thread. I'm going to turn my iron off because when you're working in a small space, you really do not want the iron on unnecessarily. All right. So it was either going to be six or nine inches. And I had abruptly decided to go with nine. And now I'm chickening out and thinking I'm going with six. Okay, so that's the three inch point. Washable marker. Alright. So, running stitch. Actually, okay. So, we're going backwards an inch so the thread is tucked out of the way making sure the needle is not coming through on the other side just pulling that tail end in we start securing the thread. Yes, sometimes it helps to make sound effects for the sewing. All right, now you have a couple stitches of running stitch there there. If I went back in here, coming out here, back in here, coming out here, I would have Holbein stitch, which is a solid line on both sides. I don't want that. I want consistent running stitch. 
and this is the side that doesn't show. So instead of going back in here, where this stitch goes down, I'm going to go back in here, where this stitch comes up, cover the stitch on the right side, match the other stitch on the right side, and then come back the other way. This is how it looks on the wrong side. This is how it looks on the right side. And there is this stitch that got duplicated on the return path and is not getting duplicated on the outgoing path. <sighs> Play around with what you're comfortable with. Some people prefer to do three stitches over the same section and not bother with the threading back and forth. Some people prefer to go more stitches, oh, start going in the opposite direction that this they're gonna sew. So start like an inch, inch and a half out, go back to the start and then just go and keep going. All works. Just want that thread solidly in there and unlikely to pull through. So that's the fun part. We just go. So this is where working with a open weaved thin fabric allows preloading a lot of stitches onto the needle before pulling it through. This is harder, obviously, with tightly woven fabrics, and it's a bit of a nightmare with denim. And I have done this with denim. All right, as I'm going, I notice the raw edge is not as tucked under as I would like it to be. I do have a crease there. It just came unfolded. This is where pinning can speed things up if you're willing to take the time to pin and then deal with getting poked by pins as you sew. Figure out what works for you. If something's not working for you, by all means, look up alternatives. Try other things. It took a long time for me to get into sewing. And I need to check what time it is. One moment. Okay. We are good. I just can't see a clock sitting here. If you look up Unshin, there are some fantastic tutorials on that and information on use of... Oh. holding the fabric taut with your feet to make it easier to maneuver, using a third hand, sewer's friend, I think there's several words for it. Okay, that is just a loose thread and not a raw edge. Let's tuck that so it doesn't come out. could also sew this with a machine. And it would probably be faster. All right. 
So, when you get to the mitered corner, I like to just go up along the fold and secure that, and then refold the other side where it is unfolding. Cross over, go back down, through. Straighten out the side you're going to sew along. I am not going to calculate how many more inches are left to sew. I am not going to calculate how many inches are left to sew. It would be too sad. There are times in crafting projects when math is encouraging, and there are times in crafting projects when math is discouraging. Like getting two-thirds of the way through a hat and realizing you have over a thousand stitches to go. Alright, so loose tuft here means the back. Okay. loose end got too short. Way too short. Okay. Okay, now I need to just adjust tension <laughs> through all of this. Okay. All right. So let's start with this edge. Get that smooth. And then this edge is wavy. Get that smooth. And then see if I can't. Yeah. All right. And the thread comes off the needle. Oh well. Nope. Not threading nicely. Here we go. 